Hi, welcome everyone. Hi. Oh. Yes, thank you. A couple more. Great. Okay, so first, logistics out of the way. I'm going to be passing around an att attendance sheet. Um, if your name's on here, all that means is that you pre-registered. Awesome. Sign right by it. If your name's not on here, just put it on the back and we'll go ahead and make sure that you have that attendance. So, Cami, I'm going to start with you. There's a little pen to go around as well. All right. Um, also, to orient you to the space, um, many of you have been here before. You know restrooms are on uh, this level, both gender inclusive as well as um, gender specific bathrooms. We have cookies and coffee and tea. Please don't let those wonderful LSC funds go to waste and enjoy. Um, right after this, we'll, be, we'll have it set up until about 2.30 today. Um, you also get, get a fantastic little lunch tote bag just for, just for hanging out. Look, Cammie's got hers right there. That's what it looks like. Yep, turn it around. Yep, very nice, Vanna. We got some Vanna. So really just for showing up um, and for committing to being prepared managers, supervisors, employees of the Lori Student Center, I really appreciate it. Um, we will see how long the mask stays on. Um, it's, it is hard to breathe. Um, I've been pretty sick this whole past week. So that's my other disclaimer slash logistic, is that if you know me, hopefully you know me to be an effective trainer, and I'm rocking it about 70 or 80% right now. So I would love some generosity. I've hopefully put together what is a more factual and informative presentation as opposed to a um, like entertaining. Usually, you know, I'll get up on the table and sing and stuff like that. Not quite there, but but usually that's about right. Anytime I have a microphone, I'm usually singing. So um, not today. I don't feel my best. But um, we are going to rock, and hopefully, I will gift you back about 10 or 15 minutes in your day because I think the information that I'll be sharing won't be. Um, uh, won't be super long-winded, so we shall see. So here we are. We are here for um, an introduction of the new format for the Lori Student Center orientation. Now I'm seeing some new faces. So you're probably like, cool, I get to get oriented today. You actually get to get oriented to the new orientation. So what that means is that if you are brand new, um, you are in the middle of our evolution. And today we are going to be learning about that evolution so that when you go into my learning and you see LSE orientation and you're like, what is this? You all will know. And then like 600 pe other people won't know because they didn't come to this session. Just kidding. We're going to be doing marketing, et cetera. But um, first of all, let's see if it starts. Oh, of course it works right when I want it to. So we're going to start off here, which is actually very similar to how the orientation starts off. Um, we are part of a larger Rams community um, of Colorado State University, uh, being in this building, a part of the extension family of the Lori Student Center. And we have our mission, being a student-centered organization at the heart of campus. We provide programs and services that create an inclusive community and inspire active, engaged learning. We also are under the umbrella of our principles of community, which are not the, or the destination, but really aspirational that we're trying to live out every day. So we go through this in the orientation as well. So welcome. So why are we here? We're passing around the attendance. Thank you. Oh, everyone's so fast. Very nice. Efficient group. We like that. Um, <clears throat> so why are we here? We are here because what has been an in-person Lori Student Center orientation that roughly about 20% of our employees went to. We are now shifting to an asynchronous format um, for some consistency processes. So who's familiar with like Bridge or My Learning? Have you been in there a little bit? Okay, so we're about half and half. Um, that's good because this serves as an introduction to the orientation as well as introduction to Bridge and My Learning. So Miguel's helping me out a little bit with that. He didn't even know he was helping me out today, but he is. So we're going to go through the five W's and the H, right? Whenever you hear about an event or new things happening, the who, what, when, where, why, and how. We're going to review what is in the content, and we do this because um, as we are building it out now, and as you all are welcoming new staff um, into your departments, we want you to know what's already covered so that you won't need to um, 
train on these type of things because we have it already covered. We're gonna do an introduction or review for some of you of the Bridge platform. Um, if you are here, you've been in the Bridge platform at least a little bit, um, if you registered, because we're doing all of these in that Bridge platform. Um, and then really we're gonna end with what you need to know and next steps. Enthralling, right? Strong, strong start to shape the, shape the trainer workshop series. <laughs> um, but hopefully it will be informative and our goal with everything shape related is to take um, energy and effort off of supervisors and managers so we can do some of the training that you all don't have to do. So, okay, so who? All LSC employees. Now what this means is that because we're in this evolution, um, as of a specific date which we will go through, everyone who is in this room, everyone who is a part of the departments of the Lori Student Center will be uploaded as learners in this system. We want everyone to be on the same page, which goes into the what. So our what is that, you know, we've been out of sorts for the past couple years, right? We've had some fantastic staff who has been here the whole time rocking, right? Our facilities staff, our catering staff, um, and others. And then some folks have been kind of hybrid, figuring out this space. So it's time to just get a back to basics. And so it comes at a good time where it's helpful for all of our um, staff to do an orientation again, kind of reorienting to the space. And plus, then you'll get a gift at the end of it. So we'll talk about that. Um, when, so the pilot is going to be July 1, and then all learners will be uploaded as of July 15th. Now that's a pretty quick turnaround. What I mean by a pilot is that there is going to be roughly 25 people that we are going to choose from a variety of departments and backgrounds. My hope is that um, many of you who have been to this session who know a little bit more familiarity of what's going on would, be, would consent to be in that first session. Again, everyone's going to do it. You would just get um, insight in it a little faster and a little earlier. Um, and then as of July 15th, we'll use those two weeks to get people to do the orientation, give some feedback, and then everyone will do it on July 15th. Um, where, so the bridge and the My Learning platform, this is a platform that the university pays for already, and so it's helpful when we can utilize it to do the things that it needs to. Full transparency, I am still learning about it and all of the possibilities. I was like going in YouTube and I was like gonna show a video of like all the cool things Bridge can do. And then I was like, wow, this is beyond my preparation level. <laughs> so we're gonna learn together a little bit, but really utilize, um, yeah, utilize uh, Bridge as a platform. So the why behind it, because I don't like being told um, what I need to do, have to do, et cetera, without the why behind it. I think lots of people are like this. I think if we don't like understand um, the rationale, it's harder to get people to buy into it. So really our why is around sharing resources. There are so many resources around that um, your staff and you might benefit from knowing that we just don't share outwards. It's like in the depths and crevices of our website right now and we need to kind of bring it up to light so that you all know what's gonna, like what's available to you and to your staff. Also around consistency, so if you've worked at the Lori Student Center for three years, 13 years, 30 years, you know that we are a community, but we can operate in some silos, right? We have a lot of autonomy around our departments, and that's fantastic. No one is coming in and telling you what you need to train your students on, how you need to do it, and this one aspect of the consistency to make sure that we all have access to the information is helpful, so that is our ask around it. Um, because of the community part. Um, how, that's what we're gonna go over. Um, any questions about this first aspect, our first kind of contextual where we're going or what we're doing? Great, easy crowd, thanks. Okay, so what is in the LSE orientation? What's the content? So here's what it looks like. So this is just a screenshot of um, the platform of what it's gonna look like and you will have an ability to move through. We will have videos, um, reading and quiz questions throughout. 
um, because it's an asynchronous and students can take it at 1 a.m. if they want to take it at 1 a.m. They can um, <clears throat> take it at the computer that's provided to them here during their lunch or whatever that is. So they can take it at any time. There is a progress bar at the beginning and we've told them that it'll take about an hour to complete. So, um, the orientation content is in four different sections. So we have our larger CSU community, um, our community and building overview, safety and, emer oh, five. safety and emergency procedures, inclusive excellence, and then employee resources. So it will like go through some things pretty quickly, but the nice thing about this is that you all as supervisors and managers can know that this exists, you will have been through it too, so you can refer folks back to it and use it as a resource for yourself too. So a lot of our employees have been asking for like mental health resources for their, their employees. It's been a challenging time for all of us. That will be highlighted just as an example in our employee resources. Make sense? Cool. Okay, so in the community section, we have involved our mission, how it connects to our principles community of community, and then our values of the Lori Student Center. We will also then go into a deeper dive to our LSC community and the building overview, recognizing that the building goes beyond the actual building, right? I think lots of people think of the Lori Student Center as a place, but it's really the community that's also supported by entities outwards, such as our convenience stores and our coffee shops. Um, We'll do a little bit of a building tour, a department overview. We'll talk about the budget, specifically the fact that um, our staff lines, specifically our student staff lines, are some of our highest. And we have way more student staff ratio per um, career staff than I think any other department. We have a strong, strong commitment to our student employees. And then we'll talk a little bit about Sky Factor stores and just scores and why people like being here. We'll do some needed stuff. Y'all, I don't know how to make this any like sexier, exciting, or like, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a hard push and it's really, really needed and necessary, right? So we'll go, we'll do a building map, evacuation, and then go through severe weather emergency kits and AED devices. Um, we will do a fantastic little video on our building managers where you um, get to meet the supervisor of the building managers and um, also go through the tell someone, bias reporting, and harassment information as part of that safety and emergency procedures. Talk about what it means to be a responsible employee, and then we have a five minute active assailant video that is made specifically for universities. It's not done by our CSUPD, and some of you still might um, elect to have the PD come in. We're doing an active assailant training tomorrow as one of our back to basics commitment. Um, that CSUPD is going to do. So if you want to run through or see what they might be able to do for your staff, this will only be about a five minute video, but it goes through all of the same elements that we have available to us at CSU. We will address um, inclusive excellence at the Lurie Student Center, um, talking about inclusion and belonging, the definition of diversity, our First Amendment understanding. So we go a little bit into what um, all of our collective rights are and what options we have. Maybe when there is speech that we might not like, but talk about the importance of cultivating a critical thought environment that really welcomes um, a multitude of perspectives and identities, ensuring that everyone feels safe to be there considerably. Um, then we'll finish up with how all of that connects into customer care with our own little kitschy acronym <laughs> that's been around for a long, long time shifted and evolved a little bit to LSC, listen, support, and care. So we'll talk through some scenarios and do some quiz questions around that. As far as employee resources, some of our fantastic staff up here, um, we will direct to the resource page and go through some of the um, entities that are available through that resource page. We'll work them through the self-service um, self area of the ARR. Um, Feel like I should know that acronym, but I don't. All I know is arr.colostate.edu and it takes you to your self-serve. So we'll do a little screenshot perspective of how to get to your WTU. 
Um, we'll overview basic needs at CSU. As you know, there has been um, a strong commitment to addressing student basic needs and wanting, um, and staff as well as faculty. So talk about some of the resources that are needed as well as other important information and development opportunities. Woo! That's a lot, right? Now I'm thinking like maybe an hour is not gonna be long enough. Um, and <clears throat> again, the idea is to go through it so that they can go back through it if they need to. Okay, before we go into the bridge and my learning platform, what questions do you have about, and this would be a helpful aspect of feedback, we're currently in the building of it, right? We have until July 1 when our pilot group comes in. Um, is there anything that I could take down that as supervisors, managers, or employees that it would be helpful to include for everyone in our LSC community to know? Yeah, Kathy. Yes, the hope is that there's two ways to that. So one is that um, the plan is to put in an accountability procedure for someone going in and checking and then notifying the employers um, at a biweekly basis. We can't commit to it more than that because, because. Um, however, uh, the other option is that we will show you the dashboard where through the admin, you can see if your employees have completed it as well. So that's for the kind of proactive managers who are like, I got 12 people, I wanna make sure all 12 of them do it within the, the two week period. I'm going in and checking that. If you're waiting for it on our end, we will still do that for you. It just might not be as, as quick as you want. So that's why there's the two. Thanks, Kathy. Yeah. Others? Yeah, Jessa. Do it. That is such a great question. Like many things, I'm trying to think of my diplomatic response and not like my frustrated response. <laughs> As many things are in flux at the Colorado State University, there is not currently um, a university supported sexual harassment training. Our understanding is that it is in the works um, and they might even be, like my information might be a little tardy, um, but it is done through HR holistically as an expectation of employment in general. So as we get to learn more about it on the HR, like the Lori Student Center HR level, we will assess if it makes sense and what could happen <clears throat> is like it could be as a part of the safety and emergency procedure section and it would take the link to the other training and it would be like a checkpoint. So we would add in a checkpoint saying, have you completed the university sexual harassment training of it? I, I wanna say that if <laughs> we feel so, like it's so critically important to have sexual harassment and assault awareness training um, that if they wait more than six months, we're gonna need to do something on our own um, because we know that there have been employees even at our, un at our in our community of the Lori Student Center who have needed to go through the process of reporting. We do a little bit of it in the harassment part of it, like where do you go to report harassment and what are your different options and who do you have accessible to you? But in terms of like the deeper dive that's supported by the university, we're in flux with that. How'd I do? Is that how I, I don't have an answer that I like, um, and that's, that's my understanding of currently where it is. And if anyone else has different information or has recently been hired and got an email saying, do this sexual harassment training, I would love to know that. Yeah, I didn't think so. Cool, so, so that's, that's kind of where we are. That, those, are, those were great, because I think that that was helpful information for me and other folks in the room. Other content thoughts that would be helpful? We'll come back to you. I'm here all day. Actually, the next three days.
So, <laughs> okay. So here we're going to do a little bit of a tour of the Bridge My Learning platform. Um, but first, I want to talk through a couple of key terms because for me, it was really funny. I was looking at these videos, and it was like Bridge for the intuitive learner who doesn't want a lot of like jumble and is easy to get through. And I'm like, what are we? I am. This is not making me feel very intuitive. So, um, as I learn, I want you all to learn. Um, and here are some key terms that I found to be helpful as we went through. So a learner is any employee of Colorado State University. What that means is that Oracle talks to Bridge about every 48 to 72 hours. Um, so anyone who is uploaded, like Stephanie Tomasini is our like HR fantastic human here. And as soon as they have an assignment number in Oracle, then Bridge pulls them into a learner. Does that make sense? So all of us, if we have an e-name um, at CSU, have access to Bridge. That's why you were able to register for the sessions. Now our partners, like our business partners, like Canvas and First National Bank, they don't have the same access to our platform. We still want to offer things to them, but it'll be a little bit different in that. So a manager <clears throat> is used as the overseer of employees that are assigned to you. So if you work with employees, and as soon as um, they come into the system and have been identified as a learner for the orientation, you'll be able to see them as part of your team. So that's when you get to start seeing like who's been assigned, if they've completed, et cetera, et cetera. Now again, we don't want to put more work on you. I feel like I'm already putting more work on Stephanie and Esther because we're asking for all of the employees that you all will hire so that you don't have to do anything on this front that we just automatically pull them in as learners. But you'll be able to see on your dashboard um, who the employees are and, how, and what their status is. Because say you want to use Bridge beyond this, and um, you all want to go to the January 22nd, 2023 Shape the Trainer conference, um, you can be able to see which sessions they went to, et cetera. So I've used this term dashboard a couple times. That's going to be the overview of my learning assignments and trainings. That is going to show each of you as individual learners what trainings you registered for, which ones you've completed, et cetera. You can download a transcript. Every learner, it has this like nice blue, I think, button um, on your dashboard that says like download my transcript. That will show what's been completed, what you're registered for, et cetera. I will tell you this, it is not pretty. It is not like a very clean um, Excel sheet that's very obvious about what. It gives you like all the information, um, but it does provide a snapshot um, if you want a different visualization. Um, live trainings are what you are attending right now. Courses are typically asynchronous content, which is what the LSC orientation will be. So this will be a course in Bridge. Checkpoints are accountability points checked by others or the learner. So that means that like, if the sexual harassment awareness training was able to be incorporated in, we would add in a checkpoint to that course. And either, <clears throat> yeah, it's an accountability point. And then finally, programs are made up of multiple of these components. So an example of a program. So I've been working with Nancy in environmental services. There is a lot of components to learn about all of the materials that they do, right? The different chemicals, the different closets, the different materials, all of that, as well as the orientation, as well as bloodborne pathogens. There's a lot. So a program that we are doing together will include the LSC orientation. It will also include tools of the trade and also include a welcome. So Nancy has been one of the, the pilots of a department specific training and orientation. So if you are training and hiring all the time and you're like, it is exhausting to 
train new people and it makes sense for us to create a training that's specific to your department, we could create a department program that would in include some of these pieces. Does that make sense? Cool. That's a lot. That's not even that many terms, but see, it got it's confusing. Any questions before I move on? All right, we're going to take a little tour. All right, forgive me for needing to drive a little bit like this. Okay, <clears throat> so you might be saying, but Emily, how do I even get to Bridge? I know, that was on the tip of your tongue, right? You're like, I don't even know how to get there. Yeah, Fritz, I'm with you. So <laughs> you go to training.colostate.edu. Some people will bookmark it, others will not, others, you know, whatever. I have it bookmarked because, well, I'm both a nerd and it's my job. But right here under the Access My Learning, um, that's gonna be the easiest access point. I just talked to Christy today, and this is how she got to it, and I was like, oh, this is a good pathway to do it. So you click on Access My Learning, and what comes up is your single sign-on. <clears throat> so then you do your single sign-on with specifically your e-name, which I think is, no, that's the number that's changing to net ID. No, no, no. Does anyone know about the change over to NetID? Oh, right. Ha! CSU EIDs are being replaced by NetIDs. So that means that your E name or EID will become your NetID. So all that means is my guess that this is going to change to NetID. So your NetID slash E name and then your password. And that will bring you, thank you, Miguel, to your dashboard. So <clears throat> when you, you will see a variety of things based on your access points as a learner or manager. When you go up to learn, you can click on learning and it will have everything from my learning. So this shows what's required, what has been added, as well as what's been completed. You can also go to a learning library. So how you as supervisors or managers or employees might think about this on your journey of professional development, maybe you're talking through your work plan for the upcoming academic year, and you're like, I would really um, appreciate learning more about te team dynamics or like group dynamics or communication. You can go to the learning library, search, let's just see what pops up when it says team. And there are gonna be all of these different professional development opportunities that you can browse through and do. Um, we also have filter that you can do, and we have our very own tag for LSC. So that means that any of the trainings that shape um, or uh, our different departments in are tagged LSC. And it will show you that there are a couple trainings with the word team in it. But if I wanted to just search for the tags, LSC, we've got all these coming up. Shape the trainer. Look, that's the sessions that you're in right now. Okay, make sense so far? So that's your dashboard as a learner. Now, if you were a supervisor, you could go to the settings, and this shows either your settings, <clears throat> you could also see your team settings. So I'm gonna show you, I think I'm gonna show you, here we go. Okay. 
this might get minorly overwhelming because since I'm an admin in Bridge, I can see all of the learners, but I wanna show you what it would look like. So um, if I'm a supervisor and I have four people that are assigned to me, I can go up here and it'll say manage users or manage team, and that will show me my people. So when I go manage users, I see everyone. Um, and I can just manage a couple of things. So if I manage group, so it might be, um, a group might be like, so each of these people, so let's see. I'm gonna just do a little search and see if, John Perry has a big team. John Perry has 94, learners, so that means that that many people are somewhere in the hierarchy identified as part of the bookstore. Does that make sense? Um, so you'll be able to, to go on through that. Again, I'm still learning on Bridge, but um, I want you to feel like you have a buddy in this and that while I wanted it to um, Um, while I wanted to orient you towards Bridge and to what's coming in the LSD orientation, I want um, these next steps to, to know that you don't have to do anything right now. <laughs> if you're like, wait, what are the next steps? What am I actually supposed to do? I know that some of you are new employees and you're like, when am I gonna get an LSC orientation? Well, if you consent to be part of our pilot program, what, what would that date be? Thank you, I heard so, yes, yeah. Yep, July 1. But right now, you don't need to do anything. July 1 is when that pilot group of 25 will start. That first week, we'll go through the orientation and provide feedback, and then we'll make edits during that second week. And then July 15th, again, all LSC employees will be uploaded as learners. New learners and employees will be uploaded on a biweekly basis, um, and they'll be part of the overall LSC group. Um, and then, by December 1, we want to give a really large berth um, of folks to complete the LSC orientation through Bridge. So our ask for everyone here, um, because so much of when you evolve something and people knew something as, as one thing, and now we're gonna go into something different, um, it's gonna be partially ambassadors, right, of the program being like, have you done the LSC? Bringing it into your staff meetings, um, this is what it looked like when I did it, et cetera. Um, I'm happy to provide many coaching sessions along the way too. Like this is a process that I, again, am learning. And so we, it's really helpful to know from you all uh, what snags or snafus we're getting into so that we can work with the university, my learning coordinators around that. So I think with that, it's 11.35. I talked at you a lot. Again, what questions or any discussion that you're wanting to? Does it feel plausible? Have I confused you? I'd like some feedback. Is this like replacing, I mean, it's been a while since I was a new employee, um, but like, it was like a big in-person, seeing it like in one of these ball, not ballrooms, but big conference rooms. Is this replacing that? So, <clears throat> That's, C yep, I think, so CSU has orientations that are held monthly for new employees through training and talent development. It was funny because I was talking with their director, Marsha Benedetti, because they're considering going this, this route as well, just because the upkeep and uptick of it is just hard to manage. Um, what is missing in this that I think Dr. Mike Ellis, as well as leadership feel is really important, is a community aspect, right? You're sitting on a computer going through information. It's necessary, but that doesn't feel communal in it, right? So we're hoping that maybe twice a year we would have like a new employee meetup where people could consent to coming um, and like having some community building of that. But just to get out information around working at the LSC and what's needed to be known, um, 
there's always the like, well, what about folks who might be introverted and wouldn't want to come to something like that? You know, they might talk to people if they were in an in-person orientation. I'm like, I promise they wouldn't talk to people at <laughs> an in-person orientation. Um, so there, we are missing, I don't promise that, some people would, I don't wanna paint that broad brush. Um, but it does miss some of that community aspect of it and we just needed to figure out a way to get the consistency across um, our employees. So, thanks Cammy. good question. Yeah, Nick. Are you gonna do this, uh, the same session again later this week? Um, not planned, however, we're recording it. Oh, that's right. <laughs> But I'm, yeah, I'm thinking what we'll do as part of the campaign of awareness to get people to know about it is we'll send out specific emails um, that have like a five minute video about what you need to know and what, and what will be coming. So those would be my two things. What else? You all look about as enthralled as I am building this thing behind the computer screen. This is my favorite part of it, is actually telling and talking to you about it. Um, I do think it will be really helpful, again, for consistency. It will be really helpful um, to give constructive feedback on uh, the type of information that we're gonna be putting on there. It will be full of short videos um, that people will be able to watch, so hopefully it will be kind of engaging. And really, again, it's, it's meant to um, get us all on the same page and help supervisors and uh, managers not have to train on some of the stuff that is a little more mundane. So, yeah, Jessica. Um, if you already said this, I have a Go for it. Is this something that like when our new team employees come on board, they will get an invitation to go to this, or is it something that we will have to demonstrate once we sign up for this? That's great. They will not need to sign up. They will be automatically enrolled as learners but when they get that email, which will be like, you've been enrolled as a learner in Lori Student Center orientation, please complete. We're gonna need your buy-in to be like, no, that's a real thing. <laughs> please click on it and please do it because it will keep bugging you until you do it. Okay. Yeah, yep. It'll be all through their CSU email. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so we'll have a couple of quiz questions along the way just to keep it really engaging also. We're not trying to trick you to say like, what was that minute two and a half of that? You know, like we don't need to do that. But we do wanna like check for comprehension and make sure that it's working. Um, <coughs> mostly videos, some talk over PowerPoints and then some reading. So really just trying to engage different learning styles. Yeah, great question. All right, well here's what I'm thinking. I'm free for the next 10 minutes. Um, have 20 minutes, maybe go out to the, the table and get your gift as well as some coffee and cookies. It is hitting right about uh, noon. In this, um, in this room right after is our time and talk with LSE leadership. If you have questions about the renovation, budgets, moving into the next year, we'd love for you to come and hang out with some of our leaders and I really appreciate you being here. That's it, that's all I got. Thank oh, thank you, thank you.